Hi, I'm Russell Bowyer and I'm from Scuba Diving Earth. Today I'm going to talk about the 10 mistakes that newbie divers make. And I'm going to go through them one by one, starting with your mask. Preparing a mask is something that often divers, when they first begin, forget to do. And all that means is to put something on the inside of the mask to stop it fogging up. It's not dangerous, but it'll make, make sure that you can enjoy the, the dive better because if your mask is fogged up, you won't be able to see anything. So as the hot cold water hits your mask, the inside will fog up and all you have to do is, sounds horrible, spit in it or use something like Johnson's baby shampoo or a defogging uh, agent. So that's number one on the list. Having the wrong exposure suit. Basically, there are three types of exposure suit. This one is a wetsuit. Over there, you probably can't see it behind this. That's a semi-dry suit. And down on the floor there, I've also got a dry suit. But it's not just about choosing the right suit um, to keep you warm. It's making sure that the suit fits. As an aside, I'll tell you a very, um, well, I, well, I think it's a funny story. We were diving from Plymouth, which is in the UK. And this guy was wearing a wetsuit. And I told him, you're going to get absolutely freezing. No, no word of a lie, the suit itself was, well in fact, I don't know how baggy you can see my shirt is, but it was fitting very baggy, and the, the, the wrist seals weren't tight around his wrists, so the water was just going to flush through it, and <laughs> I was still on the boat when he came back up, shivering, and he couldn't stop shivering, he was so cold, so make sure you have the right exposure suit, First of all, check with the dive master or whoever's on the boat and follow what they're wearing. But also bear in mind that everyone feels the cold differently. So if you think you feel the cold dif more differently to, or you feel the cold more than someone else, don't be afraid to have a, a slightly thicker wetsuit, maybe go for a semi-dry. Or what I often do in places like, for example, I, uh, when I was diving in South Africa, I went for a dry suit. Everyone else had wetsuits and the, it was a really cold, wet day. Everyone else was shivering and really cold, but I was nice and toasty warm in my dry suit. So number two, don't make the mistake as many beginner divers make of having the wrong exposure suit. Now, you may, or you can't help but have noticed to the left of me here, um, or actually that is probably to your, uh, to your right, sorry. This is a diving cylinder. Do not leave it standing upright unless it's in a, a container on a dive boat or something. Because when one of these falls over, not only can that hit something and then shear off, unlikely but it's possible, but more importantly, if that falls on someone's foot, it could break, break their toes. You won't be very popular, but more importantly, at the end of the dive, it could cost you a beer. So make sure whenever you put these um, on their own like this, lie them down to make sure that they don't fall over. Oftentimes when you're coming off a dive boat, you do find that they all get lined up ready to put on uh, transportation to go and be refilled, but that's okay. But don't just leave it standing around, um, standing upright, because that's dangerous, they can fall over. Okay, so next, uh, forgetting to turn your air on. Now, I will admit, I have done this and you're about to go in the water and you've realized it's not on you get get your buddy to do it slightly embarrassing but what can happen is people will take the mickey out of you because you know you're supposed to be an advanced or an experienced diver forgetting your air not good and all you have to do is, that air, is once you've kitted all that up don't leave it on when you first kit up because you know that's not good just turn it on just before you're about to put your um, jacket or your BCD on with the, with, the, with the tank and then turn it on just before you put it on. And the best way to make sure you um, don't forget is when you turn it on, always check your gauges to make sure A, you've got enough air and B, check by taking a couple of breaths out of your octopus or your spare air supply and your main um, regulator or um, demand valve DV and um, to make sure there's no fluctuation. At least that way, you won't forget. Um, and just before you jump in, just make sure you have got your air turned on. So, number five, forgetting to put your weight belt on. And the reason I'm telling you this, I've done it. I've got all my kit on, 
I've put my um, my exposure suit on. I've um, put my BCD with my uh, tank on the back of me. I've got my mask. I've got my fins on. I'm all ready to go. And then I realise oh, I haven't got my um, weight belt on. So make sure you put this on before you put your um, BCD and tank on because it makes it a whole lot easier. Otherwise, you have to take the whole lot off, especially if you've got your fins on. Now, fortunately, I've never jumped in the water yet without my weight belt. But please don't let that happen to you because you've got to climb back on the boat. Very embarrassing because you'll never get down unless you've got your weight belt on. So don't forget. By the way, really helpful if you give us a thumbs up, if you're enjoying what I'm saying or you're learning something from the experience. And if you want to listen to more of my uh, YouTube videos about scuba diving, please subscribe and then you'll um, get notified when I do the next next uh, video in the series. So if you're a newbie diver or a beginner diver, I'll be doing lots of these sort of tips and advice about um, how to scuba dive safer and better. Right, so on to number six. Um, well, this one's something that does happen. I'm hoping that it won't be yourself. It certainly wasn't me. Is thinking you're better than you actually are. There's an expression for this. is the Dunning-Kruger effect. And so... Don't worry about what that actually means per se, but what, what's most important to understand is to um, know your limits and dive within them. So whatever experience you have, of course you've got to gain some experience, but make sure you're diving with someone that can be uh, make it safe for you. So, but the important thing is, is don't dive deeper than your certification allows you to. So for example, if you're a paddy open water diver, which restricts you to 18 meters or 60 feet, do not dive below that until you've taken the next um, ne next certification level, so advanced water diver. The same applies to all the other diving organizations like Paddy, Nowi, and so on, dive within those ranges and they're set for, um, for, for good reason. So the deeper you dive, the potential more risk and you need to know what you're doing. So always dive within your li limits. Don't think you're better than you are. And um, you know, don't, don't worry if you're a little bit nervous. Show that. that, that's actually fine, that's normal. A lot of people are a little bit nervous when they first start diving because you're going into um, an unknown uh, environment, not what we're natural, um, we, we, it's not natural to us. So don't worry about being nervous. Tell your buddy, tell the, the, the dive master, and they'll look after you. And as you build your experience, you dive more, you'll realise actually this is actually fun. And that's what it's all about, to enjoy yourself. And make sure you do. So where are we? And uh, number seven, checking your gauges. Now you want to be able to become an independent diver. Don't only check your gauges when the dive master or the dive leader asks you to. You should be checking this on a, a semi-regular basis. Don't go over the top. But what can happen is you can have a leak or um, maybe you know, you're breathing more air than you realise. You're deeper and the deeper you go, the more air you breathe. And certainly if you've, let's say you've dived, uh, you've just done your advanced open water diver and you've done doing your very first 30 metre dive, your air will run out a lot quicker than it ever has done when you've been diving say 15 or 20 meters or 18 meters I should say. Uh, ocean diver for BSAC you can dive 20 meters. Um, check your air to make sure that you've got enough air A to get you to your safety stop at about um, five, six to five meters and then to come out with your 50 bar or, um, left remaining to have a safe dive. Number eight, fiddling with your BCD. And what I mean by that is buoyancy control comes with practice and experience. What you want to be able to get to a position of is that when you get to the bottom, and assuming you're staying at the same depth on the particular dive, a, 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 a relatively similar depth, set your buoyancy and then leave this alone. You know, your air in and your air out. You don't want to be keep on adding air, dumping air and everything like that. Get it set and then leave it alone. The more you fiddle around with this, the more air you're going to use. And the air is only limited to what's in this tank. And the more air you use on dumping and fiddling around with this, the less air that you can breathe, which shortens your dive. 
not good fun. Diving is expensive when you um, pay for a dive. You want to have that dive to last as long as possible. So leave this alone. Where are we? Fins. Don't walk around in these because one, you'll make a fool of yourself, you'll fall over and make sure they're the last thing you put on before you dive. The last thing you want to do is say you've got a, a long boat, you're on a hard boat and you're kidding up way over that end of the boat and you have to walk from one end of the boat to the other to actually get in the water. Flapping around with fins on a boat which is rocking all over the place, A, you might fall over, you might knock into someone, you might break something and um, but hopefully the worst case scenario you'll make a fool of yourself so just be aware when you put your fins on they're the last thing you should put on and try and put them on where you can then get in the water ideally if you can put them on so you can roll back off the boat even better so you don't have to actually walk around with them just an aside this is a small tip to you this is a fin it's not a flipper call them a flipper and you may end up having to buy a beer again so Fins. Right, where are we? Forgetting to equalise your ears. Sorry. No, forgetting to equalise your mask, actually. You could forget to equalise your ears, but you probably won't forget because that'll be painful. Whereas forgetting to equalise your mask is something that oftentimes newbie or beginner divers do. So when the mask is on your face, there's an airspace inside there and all air spaces get compressed as you go deeper. And what happens is that uh, creates a vacuum and that vacuum will start to pull on your eyes and the sensitive part of your eyes and pull all the blood vessels and the blood to the surface. Now whilst um, mask squeeze is not an overly dangerous thing to happen to you, it can cause uh, major problems. It's more of an embarrassment. So what you want to make sure of is when you first jump in and first start diving down, make sure you equalize your mask. And all you do is just blow out for your nose to put a little bit more air in it. It doesn't matter if you blow out too much because it'll just come out from the skirt of, of the mask. And just bear in mind the first 10 meters is when there's the biggest pressure change and in fact, as you go down, even just in the first five meters, that's when you need to be equalizing. And that's what you'll notice it because your ears will start to squeeze and you'll clear those. Just make sure you put the air in that too, because what will happen, you get back onto the boat, you'll have red eyes, it'll look like you've been in a boxing match and everyone will be taking the mickey out of you. And you don't want that to happen. So if you have any questions, if you've experienced any funny um, occurrences when you've been on a dive boat or on a dive, you want to share that or you've got a question that you would want to ask, please comment below or ask your question below. I'm more than happy and I want to be able to help you and answer your questions. Um, again, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe and um, look out for the next video from scuba diving earth.com. Just as an aside, if you want to um, find out a little bit more about mask squeeze and equalising that, if you go on to scubadivingearth.com and on the right hand side there's a search button and if you search on hashtag scuba mask squeeze, all one word, scuba mask squeeze with the hashtag in front of it, that will take you straight to an article all about that. And you can learn a little bit more about this and also there'll be a link below. Again, thanks for listening. It's been Russell Bowyer, Scuba Diving Earth. Take care and happy scuba diving.